Good morning all. My name is Andika Sminardi from Universitas Kristen Duta Wacana, Jogja, Indonesia. Today I am going to talk about my paper, The Utilization of Mind Maps to Assist a Student with Autism Spectrum Disorders in a Curriculum and Medical Development Class. Uh, for the introduction, everybody has the right to get an education including people who suffer from autism spectrum disorder, after ASD. The U.S. government had issued the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act idea, while in Indonesia, law number 20 of 2003 concerning the national education system in Article 5.2 mandates that citizens who have physical, emotional, mental, intellectual, and or social have the right to get special education. So those laws enable the students, ensure the students, including disability students, to get education. Okay, this is Yunus and Norman stated that autism spectrum disorders, or widely known in short as autism, is a spectrum disorder identified by various characteristics, which usually includes perceptual, cognitive, and social differences. The cognitive differences usually also influence the SD student ability to comprehend the lesson. Despite having a guarantee from the government, it is not easy for students with ASD to follow the lesson. Students with ASD struggle with reading comprehension, as stated by Eckerto and Finnegan in 2019. Recently, the researcher had a student with ASD enrolled in his curriculum and material development class. In this class, the students were required to analyze the environment, discover needs, set goals and objectives, and then design a curriculum and develop materials, yeah, as stated by Nation and McAllister in 2010. Well, it was a quite complicated process for the student with ASD since he could not go beyond level 2 of Bloom's taxonomy, that is to understand and remember. Even, yeah, the student found it difficult to comprehend the material presented in the form of long written text. Therefore, the researcher decided to help the student by first differentiating assignments and use mind maps in some meetings. In this paper, I would like to focus on the second point, that is to uh, use mind map uh, in some meetings. This is uh, some opinions. Agardo and Finnegan state that teachers can help students with ASD by providing visual supports. Now, the mind map is one type of visual stimulation that teachers can use. In short, mind map is a visual thinking tool that helps the student organize and remember information. The visual aspect of the mind map probably helps the ASD student to remember the lesson better. Day 1, 2015 argues that Pictures are not only more effortless to recognize and process than words, but also easier to recall. Moreover, when we add colors to the mind map, it will increase the viewer's attentional level. This, in turn, will increase the opportunity for the stimuli to be delivered and stored in our permanent memory storage, yeah, as stated by Sue Gifley and Mustafa in 2013. Well, many studies, have, many studies have confirmed the benefits of using mind maps. Yeah, among others are Chrisquia 2013 in her research, the use of mind mapping in teaching reading comprehension, uh, found that mind map helped the student to read better. Similarly, Alomari 2019 using mind map, map, map technique to improve reading comprehension ability of fourth grade Arabic language students in Jordan found the same result. Yeah, okay. The mind map helped the student to uh, get better. Also, Saori 2020, the use of mind map to teach reading comprehension found a similar result. Well, none of the studies above specifically address the use of mind map to assist ASC students. Hence, the researcher interested to study the topic with two research questions in mind. First, what are the challenges of using mind maps to assist a student with ASD? Second, what are the benefits of using mind maps to assist a student with ASD? Uh, the methodology, yeah, okay, the first, this research aims to investigate the ASD student's behavior, attitudes, and experience in using mind maps. Therefore, 
The study employed a qualitative method as suggested by Riskia 2013. Participant. The participant of this research was an ASD student joining the CMD class in the event semester 2020-2021. Only one student, yeah. <clears throat> and then this is the research design. First, on the first few meetings, the researcher observed how the ASD student followed the lesson in the CMD class. In addition, the researcher, who was also the lecturer of CMD, will see the result of the ASD student written assignment. Second, the researcher would assign the ASD student to create mind maps based on some units in the CMD model, module. Third, the researcher would analyze the mind map. Fourth, based on the analysis, the researcher would give feedback regarding the mind map created independently by the student. Fifth, the researcher would assign the student, the SD student, to create another mind map based on the feedback he received. Sixth, the researcher would analyze whether the SD student made some progress. Then, the researcher would assign the SD student to make another mind map to confirm whether he understood how to create a good mind map. Seventh, the researcher would check the SD student's mind map. The researcher would assist if the student found difficulties in creating good mind maps. Eighth, the researcher would check whether the assessment given to the student was effective. Ninth, ninth the researcher would draw conclusion. And then ten, the student would be interviewed by one of the researcher's colleagues. Data collection. The instruments for collecting the data in this research were first, observations. Second, students' mind maps, and the last, interview. Data analysis. The data would be analyzed qualitatively, and the result would be presented in the form of description. <clears throat> Finding and discussion. Observations. From the observation conducted at several meetings at the beginning of the semester, it was evident that the SD student found it difficult to comprehend the materials. He also complained to the lecturer that he was confused about the content of the lesson, especially when the lesson was presented in the form of long and complicated text. And then the experiment. The researcher then formed a hypothesis that the student will comprehend the lesson better if he makes a mind map. <clears throat> it is predicted that the mind map will serve as an aid for him to better understand the lesson. Based on the prediction, the researcher assigned the student to create a mind map from one of the chapters in the module. At this stage, the student worked independently without getting any help from anybody. Uh, you can see here, this is the mind map created by the student. <clears throat> As you can see, yeah, okay, although the key concept, the key idea is in the middle, but he used sentences instead of keywords, and there's no uh, there are no branches here, I mean, uh, the curved branches, and then the headings are not radiated into sub-branches. Also, no pictures and no, uh, no pictures and images, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and then after that, I met with the student, I explained about how to make a good mind map, and then asked him to revise the mind map. Yeah, it's uh, better here, yeah, the key concept in the middle, yeah. We have some curved branches, headings, and subheadings, and some small images here. Although he hasn't used color, yeah, maybe later uh, I can explain again to him about how to make a good mind map. And then after that, I assign him to uh, make another assignment, another mind map, to ensure to confirm whether he understood. Okay, sadly to say, it seems that he forgot some criteria of making good mind maps. So you can see here the key concept is not in the middle and then no curve branches, still in the uh, sentences, not keywords, yeah, no images and so on. So uh, to help him, I met him and met him again and then explained some uh, checklists. Yeah, okay, so uh, please check whether the key concept in the middle yeah, you have to get some important points. The heading radiate into some subheadings. Use curve branches to connect the key concept with the heading and heading with the subheading. Please make sure that you use color, use images, 
understand the flows of ideas or thoughts. And then I get uh, got an idea to help the student to assist the student by making an incomplete mind map to assist the student. Yeah. Okay. So this one is the incomplete mind maps. I uh, also give some options for him to put in the blank uh, bubbles here. Yeah. Okay. I give one example. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, about the type of syllabuses. And then after that, I give one example here, and then the student will fill in the blanks here using the option that he got. Okay, so this is the mind map completed by the student. Yeah, okay. You can see it uh, better here. He can make a uh, better mind map. Yeah, with, he can complete the mind map, use images. Yeah, the result were quite good. The student was fluent enough in explaining the types of syllabuses. Moreover, when the researcher asked him to explain one type of syllabuses without looking at the mind map, he was able to do it. After the semester ended, the SD student was interviewed by one of the researcher's colleagues. The SD student admitted that mind maps enable him to comprehend materials better. So the answer to the research question from the experiment, the challenges that the researcher encountered were <clears throat> the SS student found it difficult to create mind map independently from uh, the text. The student easily forgot how to create a good and effective mind map. Those challenges could be overcome by providing help for the students such as mind map consultation. This proved to be useful for the student because by doing mind map consultation, he remembered important points to make a mind map. The SS students needed repetition to acquire a new habit including making mind maps. The more he practiced, the better he was at making mind map. There were a lot of benefits that students gained by learning using mind maps. They are as follows. First, the student was more motivated to study because a mind map is more interesting than mere text. And a mere text. It was easier for the student to comprehend the lesson because mind map resembled the work of the brain. The third, as the saying goes, tell me that I may forget teach me that I may understand, involve me and I learn. In this study, the student was actively involved in creating mind maps. He could use images and colors of his own choices to complete the mind map. As a conclusion, <clears throat> a mind map helped the, as the student to organize and remember information. However, the student needed help from lecturer or assistant lecturers. The assistant given was in the form of scaffolding namely reminding the student regarding how to make a good mind map. This can be done by providing a checklist. Then, the lecturer provided an incomplete mind map that the SSD student needs to complete. The study shows that mind map is an effective tool to help SSD student comprehend the materials. Okay, so these are some materials, some references that you can use to learn uh, about mind map uh, further. Yeah, okay. So thank you all. I think that's all for my presentation. I hope that this will be useful for you. Thank you.